Does vitamin E in selenium really cause prostate cancer? Or I should say accelerate advanced prostate cancer? Well, this being February 2014, a lot of you may recognize the news. A study was released by the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center based upon what's called the SELECT trial, where they use selenium and vitamin E, that they claim it does. But in order for us to understand what went wrong, we first got to look at the scientific method involved. And is it difficult to do? Nah. An orangutan could figure out this study was wrong from the very beginning. Yet taxpayers continue to fund it, and a lot of news agencies continue to report it, which should show you that the news agencies which are reporting this study as is do not vet There's basically the stories or the science articles, including a lot of publications in regards to health, uh, whether it be medical journals, whatever it is, do not look at the study itself. Because I'll tell you quite honestly, if you looked at the study, you would never publish it. It's horrible. But that's just my words. Let's break it down. So we first start off, what form of vitamin E did they utilize in the study? They used DL-alpha tocopherol. Now both your biochemists out there, nutritionists recommend, recognize, I should say, one simple thing. DL, petroleum-based vitamin E, not found in food, although similar, is different, does not prevent prostate cancer. They've known this for a long period of time. Now without going into too much detail, you have eight isomers of vitamin E. Often, the one that prevents cancer is the gamma decopherol when it comes to prostate cancer. And when you look at vitamin E, D-alpha is natural, D-L, alpha decopherol is synthetic. Fred Hutchinson decided to be cheap, and they used the synthetic form, which right off the bat is indicative of experimental bias because those who were setting up the control didn't understand nutrition or nutritional supplementation from the beginning. Then we follow through. The original study in 2008, when it was first published, showed that vitamin E and selenium had no impact on the risk of prostate cancer. But that's obviously not what you heard this month. In fact, if we use the words of our, their own study, they said, Researchers found there were no statistical significant, statistically significant differences in the absolute numbers of prostate cancer diagnoses between the four groups. The placebo, the selenium, the vitamin E, and the selenium plus vitamin E. There were non-significant increase in prostate cancer in the vitamin E group in type 2, mellitus in the selenium group, but not in the selenium plus vitamin E group. In conclusion, this is their own words, SELECT has definitively demonstrated selenium, vitamin E or selenium or selenium plus vitamin E did not prevent prostate cancer in the generally healthy heterogeneous population of men. So what changed between 2008 and 2014? Well it's how you squeeze out those figures. Why would they do that? Well obviously if their study stopped in 2008 which by the way ended early because they automatically assumed that it wasn't working which is synthetic vitamin E to begin with, so it probably is, they know what they were doing wrong, just didn't want anybody to catch it, they would have continued a little further. But it's 2014, and they're still getting funding. What the heck? It's a defunct study. But let us go further. After that, half the participants they couldn't even find. The only remaining 17,000 participants out of 35,000 plus. Why? because legally they're not able to keep the personal contact information so they can't even follow up on a majority of participants. So how do they come up with these new figures in 2014 if half the participants are AWOL? Good question. You'll find this on the Cancer Institute website itself which I will link down below at the end of this video. Let us become even more absurd. Alright, they used selenium. All right. In the original study, whoops, I dropped this one, I should not have. In the selenium, with the formulation they utilized in the MPC trial was high selenium yeast. And they said in their own words, may have been more active than the l selenomethion used in the select. And this may, prevent a researcher from see, may have prevented researchers from seeing a cancer prevention effect. This is in their own words. They used the wrong frickin' selenium, and they knew it. And what would have happened if they would have used the right selenium? Well, in the original study, their MPC study, selenium 
uh, they said, however, approximately 60% fewer new cases of prostate cancer were observed among men who had taken selenium for six and one half years above that and beyond men who took a placebo. That was from the NPC study. And it also showed that men who took selenium for more than seven and one half years had a 52% fewer new cases of prostate cancer than men who took a placebo. The trial was one of the reasons for studying selenium in, sel selenium in the select trial, but they used the wrong form of selenium. How much damage did that do? Well, let's take a look. All right, now if we look at the number of men that had prostate cancer, which was 3,079, and you take 60% of those men, if they were taking the proper form of selenium, they would have never had prostate cancer. That would be 1,847 men that would have been spared the agony of developing cancer, which didn't have to, because study trial methodology said they didn't care, they'll just use what's available because it's easier. So you have 1,847 men, and who knows how many men died because the people who designed the trial did not respect what they were doing in maintaining the scientific integrity of an actual trial and wasted taxpayer dollars, causing unnecessary pain and suffering in the trial participants. On top of that, then they have the gall to go publicly and say it doesn't work knowing they used the wrong nutrient profiles in both the vitamin E and the selenium itself. That's where bad information kills. This trial should never been published in any news agency that picked it up without vetting it. You should automatically discount as a source of information. Use it for entertainment, but do not use it for news because they don't research their story sources. Outside of that, let's follow because it gets better. Trial participants were allowed to have BPH by, na by 9 prosthetic hyperplasia. BPH has not been shown to cause prostate cancer, but it can actually mask it. So you can have participants coming into the trial that already have prostate cancer, but you don't know because BPH is masking it. Now, second, and this is the main kicker, the trial participants were also allowed to take at that time called propatia for balding, or what was called uh, finasteride. F-I-N-A-S-T-E-R-I-D, and a lot of oncologists may already know what that is, and the jaws are dropping, during the trial at the exact same time. They were able to take hormone deprivation therapy at the exact same time, which would affect the trial results also. The trial was null and void, and never designed to work from the beginning, and we could follow it up now with greater amounts of experimental bias. Let's look at a couple of quotes. Let's start with the quotes from this month. All right, men using these supplements should stop, period. Neither selenium nor vitamin E supplementation confers any known benefit, only risks. Well, that's pretty general. Let's follow it up again. Same this month. Many people think that dietary supplements are helpful or at least innocuous. This is not true, said corresponding author and first author, Alan Crystal, a faculty member of the Public Health Science Division of Fred Hutch. We know from several other studies that some high-dose dietary supplements don't work. What are the studies? Oh, we can go back in a second on the bonus question, or should the bonus answer. 2011, before 2014 when they came up with these study results. So let's see how far back the experimental bias goes. Select has definitively shown a lack of benefit, select being the trial name, from vitamin E and selenium supplements and prevention of prostate cancer, and has shown there is the potential for harm. Who said this? Lori Minnesian, MD, study co-author and acting director of the National Cancer Institute's Division of Cancer Prevention. If she can't research or understand study methodology or recognize they use the wrong form and she's in charge of that division, that says more about the people that follow her advice than what she says herself. Bad, bad thing to say. All you could say this study did which showed that synthetic vitamin E and synthetic selenium had no benefit. And then the follow up, blah, blah, blah. The lack of benefit from dietary supplementation with vitamin E or other agents with respect to preventing common health conditions and cancer, improving overall survival, and the potential harm. I apologize for speaking fast, but I'm trying to make this as brief as possible. Underscore the need for consumers to be skeptical of health claims of unregulated over the counter products, which obviously is regulated if you know what GMP is. And the fact is, too, that's a pretty broad statement for them to say also themselves because they don't even know what a nutritional supplement truly is because they're using the synthetic forms. All right, then we go to the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center itself in 2012. Remember, the other statement's from 2011. 
This is due to 2014. So you can see this pattern of experimenter bias. Of course, if they're thinking this and they're extrapolating the data, that's either going to have an effect consciously or subconsciously. And then, in the Fred Hutchinson Center, myth number four, they call it, you go to the website, hopefully it's still up, vitamins and dietary supplements can prevent prostate cancer. They call it a myth. Several large randomizing trials, randomized trials, that have looked at the impact of dietary supplements on the risk of various cancers, including prostate cancer, have shown either no effect or much more troubling. They have shown that this significantly increased risk. The more we look at the effects of taking supplements, the more hazardous they appear when it comes to cancer risk. That was 2012. And of course, what did Crystal say today? Oh, he said, but we found there's no benefit for anyone, Crystal said. All we did find was a heightened risk. I'm now willing to go on the record and say there is no evidence that high doses of supplements and anything are good for you. Three days ago, February 21st, first, actually maybe a couple days ago, 2014. He's now willing to go on record. He won a record in 2011 as far as saying things don't work. So he's trying to pretend he's a scientist? No, he's a propagandist. So you look at the data, you look at the news agencies who propagate this data or poor clinical trials actually being fact. But you need to know, and that's why I did the video. It's also good as far as understand what scientific method and experimental bias is. Research it, look at it. I'll put all the links down below, and then you come to your own conclusions. Because my conclusions, unfortunately, don't look very good. Thanks once again. See you in a bit.